Hey, welcome to What is a Lutheran with Pastor Fred at St. James Lutheran Church in Marion, Indiana. Today we are in our sanctuary here at um, St. James Lutheran Church. And um, that's because we've got the rest of the building decorated up for Nativity Walk. And so I'm filming this on my iPhone um, today. And it actually is an appropriate time to be in the sanctuary. As you can see, it's decorated for Advent with the blue colors and also for Christmas, which is coming up. But today I want to talk about um, the Lord's Supper and what, what's the difference between the way that we Luth Luth Lutherans do it and how other people do it. So I'm going to show you a few things. There's going to be some different camera angles here. I hope you don't find it too confusing. But um, I'm first going to go to this chart that um, you, you see right here. And I know it's probably backwards because I've got the camera at, um, facing front. Can't figure out any other way to do this. So what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to go to the first one. This is Lord's Supper. We've got bread. We've got body. We've got wine. And we've got blood, right? And this RC stands for the Roman Catholic Church. Um, this stands for Reformed, which is like Baptist, non-denominational, Methodist, Wesleyan, stuff like that. And this is um, Lutherans. And um, really, there's three different ways of looking at communion. And in the Roman Catholic Church, um, after the priest consecrates the elements, the bread and wine, um, they become, um, in Roman Catholic theology, the very body and the very blood of Christ. And the bread and the wine um, cease to exist, or they're thereby what they call accident. In other words, not like car crash, but you can see them, you can taste them, you can smell them. But really, it is the very body and blood of Christ, and the, and the bread and the wine are not present. And it is for the forgiveness um, of your sins and also the strengthening of, of your faith. It's a sacrament, uh, a holy thing. In the Reformed Church, which again is your Baptist church, your um, non-dominational church and stuff like that, uh, when they do communion, which is not very often, it's not a priority for them, um, but they use bread, usually don't use wine, they use grape juice usually, and for them, once the elements are consecrated or whatever term they use, it's still just bread and wine. Um, the body and the blood are not there. There's no real presence of Christ. He's, the whole thing is just done in remembrance. Now, for the Roman Catholics, the body and the blood are there, and it's also done in remembrance. But for the Ro Ro Reformed, it, that's the only reason it's done is for remembrance. Um, so there's no forgiveness of sins. There's nothing like that. And they usually don't do it because it's not really an important aspect of of their of their teaching um, in the Lutheran Church we believe that when the pastor consecrates the elements that the bread and the wine which we use are still there and that the body but also now the body and the blood of Christ are there in a real presence way they are really there in a way that maybe we don't fully understand but they're there so we have all four bread and wine and body and blood and um, it's for the forgiveness of your sins, also done remembrance, and, and the strengthening of your faith. I kind of jokingly call it the Lutheran two-for-one um, deal. And we use wine because wine was the, um, the element that was used um, in, in the scriptures. Um, I'm going to move this up a little bit. Uh, simply due to the fact that they really didn't have much grape juice in, in those days. So wine was the element. And even says fruit of the vine, which is another way of saying wine doesn't mean grape juice. Um, when we look at communion, uh, realistically, it was done basically the same way for 1,500 years, the way we do it today. And maybe you could say even uh, with the way the Roman Catholics do it today. Um, and then 1,500-something um, A.D., a uh, group of reform decide we've been doing it wrong for 1,500 years. And so they said, no, it's no longer for the forgiveness of sins. It's no longer the bodily presence of Christ. Well, that goes against 1,500 years of scriptural teaching. You know, just like infant baptism. We baptize infants for 1,500 years, and all of a sudden, oh, that's, that's wrong. Um, and particularly in the United States. Uh, that, I mean, most people in the United States that um, are of Christian faith or think they know something of Christian faith are really following uh, what the Baptist or non-denominational non follows, um, but not what the church has historically followed for now um, 2,000 years. But looking at this Lord's Supper, why do we teach this stuff? I mean, why do we teach what we teach? Well, uh, first of all, the words were spoken by Jesus, who is the Son of God. 
with all power and authority. He's the one that, that said, this is my body, this is my blood. He's God. He can do anything he wants, right? Uh, second of all, the words are his last will, or some people use covenant. Um, in other words, this is what he said. You know, I'm not going to drink this again until I see you in heaven and, and, and drink of this with you. Um, and, and so words of a will cannot, cannot be changed. Third, and, and probably most importantly, this was done during the Passover meal. Uh, which pointed back the people of Israel escaping out of Egypt. And the way that happened was God told them, slaughter a lamb and take and put the blood of the lamb, the very body on the doorposts of your house, and the angel of death will pass over and kill the Egyptians, but he won't kill you because you'll see the blood. And that's what this meal pointed backward to. Also, this meal brought up the remembrance um, of all the Old Testament sacrifices that at that time were still going on, where um, the blood of the animal was shed, literal blood was shed. When the covenant was put together, the Old Testament covenant of the law, um, Moses took and not only threw the blood, literal blood of the lamb on the altar, but he threw it on the book and he threw it on the people. People actually spattered with blood, kind of gross to us today. But, but the point is, real blood was at the center of the Old Testament sacrificial system, and real blood was shed by Christ on the cross, and that blood now um, we find also in um, the, the Lord's Supper, his body and, and his blood. Um, sixth, uh, whatever number we want to put on, I got number six here. Scripture teaches that if we use the, um, the Lord's Supper incorrectly, we're not sinning against bread and wine. We're seeing it's a very body and blood. And look it up, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 11. You're seeing it's a very body and blood. Well, the body and blood of Christ has to be in the sacrament if you're going to sin against it. Second, we'll also read in the New Testament that when we eat the bread and drink the wine, we're participating in the body and blood of Christ. Those words are there. I mean, they just are. If you read the communion uh, topics about communion in 1 Corinthians 10, Corinthians 11, um, if you take them at face value, they're very simply what, what we teach today. Now, how is it possible, for instance, that bread and wine are also the body and blood of Christ? Well, our human, our, our human reason says that, that that's not possible. And that's why we call this one of the mysteries of faith, um, that Scripture says it, so we believe it, even if we don't fully understand it. You know, um, God said this, we believe it, uh, we don't have to understand it to make it real. And Lutherans use the word in, with, and under. We say the body and blood of Christ are in, with, and under the bread and wine. That The real presence is there. It is the very body and blood of Christ uh, that we're eating and that we're drinking in the wine um, and in the bread. Now, the next question is, does everyone receive the body and blood of Christ in the sacrament? I mean, if someone comes up that doesn't believe in it, for instance, if a Baptist shows up at church or a Wesleyan shows up at church and they come in, a uh, Methodist or non-denominational, and they come up and they take communion and they say, well, it just represents, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it, it's just a remembrance. Do they receive the body and blood of Christ? In other words, does their faith make it what it is for them? Um, the answer to that is they do receive the very body and blood of Christ because it's an objective reality. Faith changes nothing. Faith just grabs onto what's already there. Faith receives what already exists. It doesn't create anything. There's no thing of just believe. That's great for Disney movies, but it's not a reality. Um, so whether we believe it or not, and whether somebody believes it or not, it's there. Uh, Luther even said that if a rat ran across the altar and, and snatched up a piece of the body of Christ being used for communion, that he would be eating the body of, of, of Christ. So it's an objective reality. The difference is... Um, somebody taking it without believing that it is the very body and blood of Christ, according to Scripture, could be sinning against the body and blood of Christ to their own damnation and, and own harm. And so that's a real concern for us when we serve communion on, on Sundays. And uh, are, are we, are we um, being helpful to people or harmful to people? We, we trust that people believe what we teach here. And that, that, that they believe if they don't, they, they shouldn't be taking um, communion. And we're going to talk about that in a couple of weeks because we're going to talk about what, what we mean by open communion, close communion, and close communion in, in the Lutheran church. And why we do that and why we're not being mean when we do it, but why we're really concerned about people's spiritual health um, and their salvation. We're going to do that in a couple of weeks because next week... We're going to have an Advent special because we're in the midst of Advent right now, as you can see by all the blue around here. 
And uh, we're going to talk, what is Advent? Is it just pre-Christmas or is it something else? Well, you know, God's blessings and uh, we'll see you next week. Peace out.